Well, good day to you. I am Reverend Richard Steve Mitchell. It is my delight to say to you, happy Jamaica 51st celebration of the independence of our um, enslavement from the monarchy of the British Empire and other empires that had been stronghold over the the diaspora. Um, we're here. I'm here to again to say that um, Jamaica has been going through a strong and uh, and courageous upliftment and movement of the development and the of the minds and the spirit and the economy of the Jamaica itself and the diaspora that is throughout the world. It is my hope that um, this presentation that had been taken, that had took place rather, at the Toronto City Hall, Nathan Square, Phillips Square, um, most uh, spe specifically. And it was a delightful moment for me being one that is of this uh, Jamaican um, born um, individual living here in the diaspora, the Jamaican diaspora. My aim is to have myself foremost to be entwined in the Jamaica diaspora and the Jamaican culture, whether spiritual culture it is or of the the, the heritage that has been so strong and one that has been ingrained in my psyche and my spirit. Um, the fact this this presentation and this ceremony that took place on August the fourth again at Nathan Phillips Square, which followed by a search a church a service at Faith Sanctuary, which is located at 1901 Jane Street. Uh, my heart has been overwhelmed to see how much we've been trying to keep the structure and the culture and the inheritance or the heritage of the Jamaican people and, uh, and and where we have been to where we are and to where we're going. And so take, be delight. I hope that you will be delighted in, 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 in viewing this um, presentation, which was um, brought to you by the Jamaican Canadian Association, who is doing a great job under the, the, um, the leadership of Audrey Campbell, a young woman who loves and embraces her culture and her country and the different um, um, personalities that exist in our leadership and um, the other areas of the Jamaican um, economy and um, country itself. So I say um, enjoy and uh, um, the MC for this event was um, the one and only Lance Roach. Um, the one who sang the national anthem which we missed was um, Glenn Ford Gordon and the opening in prayer was um, the Reverend Vernal Savage and Miss Audrey herself, again, the president of the United of, <laughs> of the Jamaican Canadian Association, and um, the Honorable uh, Mr. George uh, Set Ramakan or Mr. Set George Ramakan. Laura McNeil, the counselor, um, deputy high commissioner um, from Jamaica to, to Canada or to Ottawa, and Miss Mitzi, Mitzi Hunter, the newly elected MPP for Scarborough Guildwood, who has had a strong heritage 
um, in from the Jamaican background who has been and is doing great and wonderful things in Scarborough and uh, Mike so enjoy and be blessed financial institutions, which are considered the backbone of this country. We are, ladies and gentlemen, we are major contributors to the Canadian economy. This is true. We can never forget the contributions that Jamaican nurses have made to the healthcare sector. These women came to Canada as part of the domestic program in the 60s and transitioned to the healthcare sector. So ladies and gentlemen, we are in every facet of this country. As we celebrate this milestone in history, let us not forget the journey that brought us here, the sacrifices that were made as we look forward with anticipation to the journey ahead. May God continue to bless Jamaica, land we love. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. At this time, I'd like to welcome Mr. Seth George Ramakan, Consul General of Jamaica to Toronto.
Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Lance Roach, President of the Jamaican Canadian Association, Ms. Audrey Campbell, Deputy High Commissioner and Counselor, Ms. Laura McNeil, newly elected MPP, Ms. Missy Hunter. Dr. Marion Chambers, former MPP and Minister of Government in the Government of Ontario. And Dr. Alvin Curley, former Member of Parliament and Speaker of the House of Representatives in Ontario. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on this the 51st year of Jamaica's independence, I salute you, the Jamaican Canadian community here in Toronto, and the many Jamaican Canadian organizations here, and I hail them for their unparalleled and unceasing commitment to Jamaica's well-being and development. This unparalleled commitment was recently demonstrated by the strong Canadian presence and participation in the recent 5th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference in Montego Bay, Jamaica in June 2013. Much kudos to the many persons who joined together to ensure Jamaica's presence, well, Jamaican Canadian presence in Jamaica and for the great work that you continue to do. Jamaica's road to independence was a long struggle led by our forefathers and our national heroes who fought to ensure our basic human rights and that we become a sovereign nation. Over the period of our independence, Jamaica has made remarkable gains that have positioned our nation globally as a major player in the international forum and in the fields of academia, the fields of sport, the fields of music and culture and many other disciplines. Only last year, a book was published titled Jamaican in Canada, When Aki Meets the Codfish. And that book has exhibited the 250 Jamaicans who are highly distinguished and has made a lasting co co uh, contribution to the development of Canadian society. As we celebrate our 51st year of independence, let us be reminded that this begins our next 50 years as a sovereign nation. Without a doubt, the lessons and experiences of the last 50 years should serve well as we seek to achieve Jamaica's millennial goal to make Jamaica a place of choice to live, to work, to raise families, and to do business. I salute you, the Jamaican Canadian community, for your unrelenting commitment, your unrelenting service, and your distinguished and high achievement that has lifted the flag of Jamaica, the real flag raising that we have today is your holding up the flag of Jamaica so high that everyone can see it.
it is no wonder that today, as we meet for this occasion, that surrounding us is an event, Jamaica Iris Festival, because the Jamaican culture is so penetrative, it has reached to every corner of the world. On behalf of the government and the people of Jamaica, I salute the many Jamaican Canadians across the greater Toronto area as you celebrate the independence of the country of your heritage, Jamaica land we love. May this be a really eventful day as we will proceed to have the independent church service right after this function. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ramakan. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Laura McNeil, Councillor and the Deputy High Commissioner to Canada from Jamaica. Mr. George Ramakan, Council General, Dr. Lola Ramakan, Ms. Audrey Campbell, President of the Jamaican Canadian Association, Ms. Mixie Hunter, congratulations. Um, other distinguished guests, fellow Jamaicans, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We have come together today to celebrate what means so very much to us, our homeland, Jamaica. By raising our flag, we acknowledge the fact that Jamaicans who have made a life here in Canada have done so with pride, never forgetting their roots, while making meaningful contributions to their current communities. As we enter into our 51st year of independence and mark 125 years since emancipation, I encourage all of you as Jamaicans to continue to build a progressive relationship between our two nations, Jamaica and Canada. For those who are not Jamaican, we thank you for supporting us as we celebrate. You are indeed Jamaican in our hearts. It is, a, it is truly a pleasure to be here today with you, and I hope that this event will continue for decades to come as a sign of respect and remembrance for a nation that remains triumphant, proud, and free. I extend apologies for the absence of High Commissioner Steely Montes, who having shared with me every year since her arrival in Canada in 2010, has now had to take the decision to be with another community at this time. She sends her regrets and her best wishes for a happy independence and offers the following message, which I will now read. I am grateful to the Jamaican Canadian Association for its leadership in organizing this event year after year and for all who make the effort to join them in this most important of activities. After the emotional and heartwarming long year celebrations of 2012, we meet again under much somber but no less meaningful circumstances to mark another occasion of the anniversary of our country's independence our 51st. We do so conscious that we have al already embarked on the next 50 years of national life and that the future is a prospect that remains as glorious as it did when we first stepped in onto the threshold of our freedom in 1962. We must believe that this is so as we cannot allow our faith in our abilities to diminish. Our hopes for future generations require us constantly to seize opportunities for realizing our dreams in spite of the challenges which surround us on every side. In this, our constant source of inspiration has always been our nation's flag, which today we raise in homage, in gratitude, and with promise. Whether we drape our flag around our shoulders in the throes of victory on the track, fly it high above our buildings on festive national occasions, Place it in the hands of the young as we teach them to take pride in our country, or lower it in tribute to the fallen. Our national flag is a symbol of unity, a homage we pay to the fathers of independence and in memory of those who struggle for the opportunities which we now so often take for granted. Again and again, it reminds us that challenges there are, but the land is green and productive, and the people are strong and creative. We believe this instinctively. Past experiences have confirmed our resilience and the future awaits our actions with conviction. It should be a source of comfort that in many cities around the world, 
where there is a significant Jamaican presence, our co-nationals are similarly embracing our flag today and leading us to all that state. On an occasion like this, we pause, therefore, for even a brief moment to remind ourselves of what it means to be Jamaican, of how much we owe to those who have gone on before, and to reaffirm the vision and hope which this symbol conveys. In honor of this day, we fly our flag high and with pride as we celebrate our dear island home, Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, let us enjoy another Independence Day together and continue to do our part to make Jamaica great. Happy Independence, Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McNeil, for that wonderful message. At this time, I'd like to welcome Ms. Mitzi Hunter, MPP for Scarborough Gillard. Master of Ceremony, Mr. Lance Roach, Reverend Cornell Savage, Ms. Audrey Campbell, President of the Jamaican Canadian Association, Mr. Seth George Ramakan, Consul General of Jamaica, and Dr. Ramakan, Ms. Laura McNeil, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm so honored to be here standing before you today and to be joined by Dr. Marianne Chambers and Dr. Alvin Curling. The journey for me has been a long one and I don't believe that it is an accident that on Emancipation Day, August the 1st, 181 years after the end of slavery, that I was elected MPP for Scarborough Guildwood. And I know that I stand on the shoulders of giants. Two of them are sitting here today, as well as Margaret Best, Jean Augustine, and many others. And with that, I know that the expectation is to build upon that strong legacy. And I really accept that very humbly. I'd like to bring you greetings on behalf of the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne. And it's a personal message from the Premier. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I am delighted to extend warm greetings to everyone celebrating the 51st Jamaica Independence Day. Ontario's strength comes from its diversity, and the Jamaican Canadian community is a vital part of this province's rich mosaic. I commend the Jamaican Canadian community for its many invaluable contributions to the social, cultural, and economic life of our province. Know that these contributions have made Ontario and Canada as a whole a more dynamic place to live. This joyful day is an ideal opportunity to reflect on the rich heritage and traditions that define and distinguish your community. May this also be a celebration of the food, music, and vibrant culture for which Jamaican Canadians are well known. Please accept my best wishes for an enjoyable and memorable celebration. Kathleen Wynn, Premier. I am delighted, and personally delighted, to join you here to celebrate with you our annual Independence Flag Raising Ceremony. I was born in Jamaica. I came here with my family at the age of four. And eventually, we settled in Scarborough. So it was wonderful for me to go home to Scarborough and to run for the position of MPP to represent Scarborough Guildwood. I want to say thank you to the Jamaican Canadian Association and really my friend Audrey Campbell for inviting me here today. I'm happy to stand here as a member of the community and know now as a member of the Liberal family representing our Premier Kathleen Wynne. I'm delighted to be celebrating the 51st Jamaican Independence Day with all of you. And as noted in Premier Kathleen Wynne's greetings, Ontario's strength really does come from its diversity 
and the Jamaican Canadian community is a vital part of this province. I know in Scarborough Guildwood, our Caribbean community is the largest visible ethnic community in Scarborough. Our community has had many invaluable contributions to the social, cultural, and the economic life of Ontario. There is much for us to celebrate as a community, and this flag symbolically represents Jamaica's independence from Britain in 1962. But you know, I want to reflect on the contributions that Jamaica has made to the world. Recently, the Song of the Millennium was announced, One Love from Bob Marley, a son of Jamaica. And with that, I wish you one love, and I am so excited to join you today for this celebration. Have a great day. Thank you. Well, here we have um, met the, the Honorable Rick the uh, Hunter, uh, the new elected um, representative for Scarborough Guildwood, and she is definitely an uh, 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 individual to be reckoned with for um, the opposition party. So, however, I would want her to just make her sentiments on her objective. Well, it's wonderful to be here on uh, Jamaica's Independence Day, the 51st uh, celebration of our independence, and I'm the newly elected member of provincial parliament under the leadership of Premier Kathleen Wynne. I am delighted to represent the people of Scarborough Guildwood, and my focus is going to be on building a subway and expanding that into Scarborough. Uh, it will create jobs and help build our economy. I'm also very very passionate about young people and jobs for young people and uh, ensuring that our youth strategy is benefiting the young people of Scarborough Guildwood. I also have met so many wonderful seniors as I was uh, campaigning and I know that we have to care for our seniors and that will also be a focus of mine as well as affordable housing. So those are some of the priorities that I have but I'm just getting started and I can't wait to join my other Liberal colleagues at Queen's Park and be that strong voice for the people of Scarborough Guildwood. Well, thank you kindly and hope to have further um, dialogue with yourself and uh, may the future be bright for you. Well, thank you for having me and I wish you and your audience all the best. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. At this time, I'd like to welcome Reverend Savage again to lead us in prayer for your independence. I'd like you to stand as you are able as we the prayer is printed in the, you know, in the bulletin, in the program, and I would like you to respond here to the audience. Ending, we pause to recognize your greatness, which surpasses all understanding. We stand on, on the holy ground of history, recognizing your divine help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Deal graciously with us, O oh Lord, that this time of celebration may be marked with our choicest blessings as we offer thanks for heroes and patriots who won our freedom. Let us respond with, with the words, Hear us, O oh Lord. Let us pray that we may cherish the noble traditions, the right for freedom through blood and sacrifice, and remember with gratitude the labors of our heroes. Let us offer thanks for those who bravely supported unpopular causes despite danger and persecution. Let us pray for forgiveness of our national sins and social sins, for forgiveness from greed and selfishness, pride and jealousy, that freedom may banish tyranny. Let us pray for deliverance from the unrestrained quest for health, for wealth, low moral standards, standards, violence and hate, which rob us of brotherhood, neighborhood, and family. Grant, O Lord, to Jamaica, land we love, a clear vision of our highest good and to our leaders a clear judgment as to how that good may be attained. O God of power, 
truth and peace, we pray your blessing upon all the independent deliber deliberations and celebrations at this time. Give us vision, give us wisdom lest to be perished. May the influence of your good spirit prevent any inflammatory word, provocative deed. And may we all be drawn together in fellowship and in purpose and reconciliation. Ever mindful that if the Son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. closing remarks, I would like uh, to say a few um, things that we have on the agenda coming up at the Jamaica Canadian Association. On August the 10th, which is, will be our annual Independent Gala, which will be the Association, I would like to thank everyone to be a part of our Independent Ceremony today. And also I would like to thank IRFS for providing the space for us, their equipment. They have been so great to us throughout the years and I really thank them for that. At this time, our church service will be held, held today at 3 p.m. at the Fake Sanctuary. That's Jane and 400. Uh, that's uh, 1901 Jane Street, starting at 3 p.m. Thank you everyone for attending, and hope to see you all at the church ceremony.
my brothers and sisters, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All protocols have been previously observed. Permit me to just endorse the greetings that have been shared by others here this afternoon. It is absolutely delightful, brothers and sisters, to join with all of the other members of the diaspora here in Canada to celebrate with Jamaica this wonderful milestone. I want to say Jamaica land we love because that is the official name of our country. We grew up hearing Jamaica land we love and some of us thought that that was the full name of our country. <laughs> so I want to celebrate this wonderful milestone with my country, Jamaica land we love. A hundred and seventy-five years since emancipation. Fifty-one years since political independence. That's a whole heap to celebrate. You know, brothers and sisters, this is a truly exciting time for us. Really, really exciting. The barbecue grills have been steamed up and things are going to happen tomorrow. I can't tell you about all that's going to go down tomorrow and for the rest of today. But it's an exciting time among Jamaicans here and at home. But I have been tasked this afternoon to ensure that when we leave here and we are engrossed in the celebration, that we also do some serious reflection. I am tasked to ensure that when we are done, we will be able to commit ourselves to community action and to do something on behalf of our country. So let me ask you to join with me as I try to explore that passage of scripture which was read from the book of Joshua chapter 4 and to see if we can engage this text a little bit to see how the principles of this passage may be embraced so that all of us may be edified when we leave here this evening. My brothers and sisters, Jordan was a long time in coming. Centuries ago, God had made a promise to Abraham of giving them a land. But between promise and possession, a whole lot of things happened. A whole lot of things. The promise over here and the possession over here, between that, there was fear. And there was the Red Sea. And no Jordan. And our, 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 our brothers and sisters had to navigate treacherous waters in order to get from promise to possession. But this particular day, they were on the banks of Jordan and they were about to enter into the promised land. It was about to become a transition for them from promise to possession. And they had an experience when they came out of, of Egypt. When they were making their transition from slavery to freedom, the Red Sea stood between them and freedom. But they had a God who 